home with Mike and Arif. And anybody who's ever bought a home understands that the process of purchasing a home can be stressful. And certainly if you've tried to buy a home in the last two, two and a half years, you know that far more than anybody else, just how stressful it can be. If you have attempted to buy a home in the last couple of years, you are most likely in a situation where you were putting in multiple bid or multiple bids were being put in. Uh, if you were lucky, you came through the victor, but more often than not, you had to repeat the process again, again, and again. Some people were successful. Many people just walked away from the whole thing, threw their hands up. Uh, it's been a frustrating couple of years for buyers, that's for sure. Well, it's been an interesting couple of years, and it didn't have to be frustrating, Mike, but it certainly was, and I can yeah. understand why it was. Again, uh, you know, people, uh, when, when you're looking to buy your home, certainly if it's for you and or your family, uh, it's, it's very reasonable for it to be an emotional event, right? Well, for sure. an, an emotional decision emotional. that needs to be made, an emotional process, you're doing this for your family, yeah. You know, you're putting it all on the line. Oh yeah, right? and uh, yeah, it's not just an impulse purchase. It's it's your future. And when you're in that scenario and you realize, okay, I've got my bid in on a house. Uh, you think you've put in a healthy bid, and you find yourself realizing I've either got to step away now, or I've got to go deeper here uh, financially. And that is a cause for well, and that added that stress. in itself is yeah, absolutely yeah. is is. And do you have the capacity? Do you have the the the, the wherewithal, the self discipline, yeah. whatever it may be, as to well turn as, to your yeah. partner if that is what you're doing. You're working with somebody else on this, mm -hmm. and to basically in the heat of the moment make a decision uh, that says you know well, we're walking it. away a, or we're going to go in. Notice, no, you got to do it. And the question becomes, of course, for anybody who's looking at the market today, Mike. Just a, f just a few weeks after the hottest market of all time. Weeks, we're talking less than 10 weeks mm -hmm. ago, we were in the hottest market ever yep. in this province, certainly in this region, maybe in this country. And now all of a sudden, we've got the headlines mm -hmm. and all of the experts who are basically saying, times are tough. Do we count ourselves among those experts, Araf? Well, I'd like to count ourselves separately from those experts because if you so. look at our track yeah. record over the last couple of years, four years of doing this show, mm -hmm. um, well, I'll, I'll leave it up to our audience to, to decide that they want to look through the archives. Yeah. But uh, we've been absolutely spot on our predictions. And taking on the headlines too. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what I—that's what I would like to do today. Actually, sure. in, in, in fact, is to take on the headlines. However, I will say, if you've been watching the show and if mm -hmm. you've been paying attention, if you've actually taken note and listened to any of the guidance and suggestions that we've made, you're not in trouble today. Yeah. If you haven't, well, then I mean, I, I'm the—I'm not a fan of the, the "we told you so." However, if you haven't paid attention, you know. Uh, again, a couple things that we can give you. One, there's the, well, maybe this time you'll pay attention. Uh, however, uh, you're not in trouble unless you sell. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are living in a home that they purchased three months ago yeah. uh, where they have more mortgage than the house is worth, according to certain experts today. Well, that's not a position anybody ideally would like to be in, but you know, with time, you can ride that out. We, we've seen that a couple times in our lifetimes where house prices were upside down, where you were, had more invested, bigger mortgage than what you would be able to sell your house for. Um, 1989, 90 was one example. And I know when I moved to Barrie in 2000, which was 11 years later, bought a house, um, the identical house across the street, my neighbor had purchased in 89. He had paid $150,000 more for his house uh, then than I paid for mine 11 years later. Mm -hmm. So it was another 10 or 11 years before he was basically breaking even on that. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen today. Yeah. I don't think that's oh, going to no. happen in this scenario here. And by the way, let's get into some of that detail. Well, how is it possible that a house is worth a little bit less? not dramatically, let's not get carried away, yeah. than it was a couple of months ago. And it comes down to, there's a, there's a term in real estate and in lending that's referred to as fair market value. Yeah. And fair market value, just for folks at home, mm. is really simple. It's 
uh, the price of the house being determined by a willing buyer and a willing seller without any yeah. undue influence. In other words, there's no gun to your head to, to make this no. transaction happen. What are two people willing to uh, trade the house for dollars for? Uh, and and uh, when, now what has caused that to change? Well, we, we all know, I mean, we've been saying again, mm -hmm. for months and months, if not years, watch out, we're at, we're at historically artificially low interest rates. Yeah. Artificially is the key. They are artificially low interest rates. Yeah. It, it has been a fragile economy. There are those in the headlines and the newspaper experts and the politicians don't listen to what they're saying, mm -hmm. basically telling us the economy is just fine. There's nothing to see here. The economy's fine. It's booming. Even if you look today, the, you know, oh, uh, the numbers are hot, and by the way, women are making up the, the greatest uh, number of returns to employment. Yes, of course, COVID's over, and who traditionally and stereotypically was staying home to help homeschool the kids and, yeah. and, and work from home or, or uh, do the great resignation or pick up a side gig or whatever it might be, right or wrong, love it or not, please don't shoot the messenger, it's typically the woman has done that, the females, the mothers mm -hmm. have done that. Well, COVID's over-ish. And yeah. they're making the great return. So these numbers, these these headlines that we're reading, everyone's like, "Oh, this is fascinating." No, it's not. Yeah, we're just it's not basically fascinating getting, at all. getting it's, back to where we it's were. It's very normal. Before we're not making headway or. or it's the same as a headline bounce. just before Christmas that says uh, employment uh, unemployment is down. We, yeah, it's all the part timers doing yeah. the Christmas uh, shift. Yeah. Right. So where are we now, and and why are we in this position here? Well, interest rates are going up to cool the market. Why? Inflation. Yeah. And Why? And when because do, too much money was yeah. given away on subsidy. Why? When, when, yeah. And when I'm just trying to think, and you may recall this better than me, it's 2022, early summer. At what point this year did we see the first uh, rise on the Bank of Canada rate? I mean, there was talk of it that it was coming, it was happening for quite some time, so long so that I think some of us may have even thought it was never going to happen. It would just keep getting pushed down the road. Then it finally happened. Was that around yeah, March? Yeah, it, it was about March. Absolutely, yeah. I think it was March. And we've had how many increases since then? And what are that? What is that total increase? If I can put you on We're the spot, up a point and a half, basically. Yeah. At this point, is they're looking at for June. They're they're predicting that there will be more. Let's put it that way. Yeah. They're not done yet, which I think is absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous, uh, and not ridiculous because it doesn't need to happen again. We, we talked about this before, mm -hmm. people were emotionally panicking, thinking, now's my chance to buy a home, and if I don't buy a home now, I never will. You never will. Well, to there get was, away from yeah. the GTA, to move up here, however, there was, that was we only don't a part have of it, though. A lot of no. people did not have savings. They no. were seeing how much money they could borrow from family and friends, and yeah. how far they can stretch their dollar based on the low interest rates, even with the stress test, and, and, and again, you know I'm not a fan of the stress test formula, but the f stress test likely put some protections in this particular case in yep, for people, for sure. where they were buying it, it as much house people. as they possibly could, instead of saying, I can get in a house and be without stress. Yeah, we've always like, talked about the buffer zone, having that buffer, no buffer zone in there. whatsoever. And many of us don't, and, and with the, the you know fast rising prices of the past two and a half years or off the past five to ten years really um, it's hard to build in that buffer zone because you can watch almost monthly for the past couple of years the amount of home you'd be able to afford continuously shrink and shrink and shrink and now and that was through prices rising um, what's interesting now is you've got a government that says okay we we need to rein this in there's just too many people getting in over their head buying homes. The market's too crazy. Prices are going up too fast. Um, you know, rising interest rates will help to curb that. But what that does is it doesn't suddenly make homes, the home buying experience, cheaper for people because as house prices, you know, at least ideally will begin to decrease, which is their plan you're still paying more for that money you're borrowing yeah, to buy Mike, that house. So I it, disagree entirely with that out. entire philosophy. Well, tell me why, Eric. I will. Okay. You name me one parent who took their kid at the mm -hmm. age of three and tossed them into a, a, an, a martial arts class mm -hmm. and said, start in the black belt. Yeah. Three years old, start as a black belt. I'm mm -hmm. going to train you as a black belt. I it's, remember my first swimming lesson, they threw me into the well, deep end of the pool. Well, my mother did that to me too, and I'm still dealing with that today. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but literally, you don't start anybody in junior kindergarten mm. and give them calculus as Explain the first Explain the analogy, how it 
it works here. Nobody entering the market who has struggled with being in the, uh, finding a way to enter into the market, whether they've been renting or living at home mm -hmm. with uh, parents or guardians or whatever it may be, there, there was never a suggestion or a manual to home ownership that said you're 20x years old or you're 30 whatever years old, mm -hmm. and, and I'm making a whole bunch of suppositions right now, but go with me on that, yep. that for your first home, you should go from mom's basement to the mansion. No, well, and, and, and that's, that's obvious. And I that's agree with you there. that's what people have done. So what's wrong Too with often. starting with a smaller yeah. condo or a detached or a row house or whatever, yeah. uh, a, a duplex, and work your way up. Well, to be fair, I think the majority of people, at least the majority of people I come across through my work as a realtor, do just that. Um, they have their designs on that bigger house, but I, I think they quickly come to realize, no, it's it's a ladder, and I've got to start on this rung. I can't start halfway up the ladder, and you know they. they if won't I don't get it now, I'll never be able to. Sense. I'll never be able yeah, to. Home a, uh, but just getting your one home. foot in the door and making the transition from renter to buyer is your best safeguard against well, any and, changes within the market. And the other thing, Mike, as you talked about just a moment ago, is that the market is cyclical. Mm. And, and, and again, which market? Well, it's like well, a tide that There is no Canadian in, market, there's out. no Ontario market, there's no even, yeah. re, there, there's just our localized regional uh, markets yeah. uh, that matter. And again... Uh, but interest rate changes are coast to coast national though. Interest so rate changes are coast to coast, absolutely. However, uh, you know, we talked about, again, going back to the point of how is it possible that 10 weeks later a house is worth slightly less than what I paid for it? And again, slightly, I want to calm people down yeah. just a little bit. Um, and, and that is because, uh, you know, plain and simple, with the interest rates rising, mm -hmm. People who are overextending themselves or going for those high value or high market homes uh, may have backed off a little bit. And Mike, you have an opinion on that. No. Where does that redirect the energy? Uh, I just, uh, before I even get to that, I okay. just want to say like th that headline temptation of printing that headline, whether you're an online or newspaper or television uh, news, uh, you know, editor or publisher, you know, if you can put that uh, that headline out there, that prices are dropping. Um, you're going for that. But I think when you dissect it, as you and I like to do, you find out that the reality is something a little bit softer, or a little bit different, or maybe even completely different from that. And from what I am seeing out there, I just had a buyer last week. We went to put an offer on a house and realized there were 12 other people bidding on that house. So we, even though it's not across the board multiple bids on every home, there are still pockets where you're seeing that there are still agents and their uh, clients, their, their sellers, who are positioning the home to encourage those uh, multiple bids. So that is happening still to a degree, but what you're seeing just as much of now too is homes that are being reduced, who were, that were ambitiously priced, that are having to reposition at market value as you're stating, and buyers having that opportunity to come in with a, a more realistic bid on that house without the worry that 10 people from you know the GTA area who just sold their place for two million dollars that they bought for 500,000 10 years ago are going to come in and have no regard for going you know 50 100,000 over bid yeah that's happening uh, a little bit less now well and that's listen, giving I, opportunity to that buyer who's been waiting I am I'm going to suggest to our audience and I'm going to suggest to you and I in dialogue that uh, uh, marketing is everything, mm -hmm. and in every market there's going to be marketing, and there's going to be how do we move product, how do we sell, how do we make the best uh, of a situation, and whether it's the banks on the interest rates, or whether it's the politicians or the those who are setting policy, etc., mm -hmm. uh, there is always a message behind the message or a story behind the headline, yeah. if you will, and I think that that's our purpose here. <clears throat> to, to dig into that a little bit deeper. So uh, stick with us for more of Hitting Home with Mike and Arf on the other side of this break. And we're gonna continue this conversation and eventually get into, well, how do you take advantage of this opportunity or this market and how do you best prepare yourself to have a successful, uh, you know, a successful transaction and a- Purchase and or a just continuation as a homeowner. Absolutely, yeah. so we'll be right back on the other side of this break on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RFN. Mike, this is bound to continue to be a lively <laughs> conversation if you I were think so. tuned in uh, during the break. Uh, but Mike, be, be, be for, for the sake of our audience, what? <laughs> 
Oh, he didn't that? like it. I don't know. It was good entertainment. <laughs> All right. Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> All right. Mm. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RFN. Mike, uh, you know, this is sure to be uh, t to continue to be a lively conversation uh, about the market and, and about where we find ourselves. Obviously, we want to set people up for a successful transaction and, mm -hmm. and give the best guidance that we possibly can, read the fine print. Uh, however, for, for, uh, for clarity's sake, though, Let's get into making sure everybody understands the difference between uh, a, a the price is dropping mm -hmm. and a cooling market, yeah. and what does that mean, and how does well, that happen, and and you yeah. know why does that only make sense right now? Well, the the, the corrections are occurring out there in the market. Uh, as I said before the break, we're seeing fewer multiple bids on homes. Uh, we're seeing a lot of sellers who were ambitiously listing their homes for. 100, 150 or more above what the last home in their neighborhood of equal value to theirs sold for, uh, fully anticipating that someone's going to come from the GTA area and buy that on their first outing uh, looking at homes in Barrie. And that may well have happened in the last couple of years, but that's happening less and less. So those homes are going on the market overpriced, sitting for two, three, four, five weeks, and the buyer and the realtor are sitting down realizing we got to change something here. So they're bringing the prices down, and that's where that adjustment is happening, is prices are being lowered. The, the, uh, not so much the sale price has, has changed drastically, but the original asking price and the eventual sale price is, is starting to change. Again, I, I we said this just before the break, a lot of this has to do with marketing and timing the market, but yeah. if, if we had the opportunity on community television to do the sort of flashback and go back one year oh, ago. I'd love to do that. We'd love, I'd love to do that as well. And, and yeah. you'll remember, we were very clear in saying this, for all of the people who are getting excited and saying, if I don't go now, I'm not gonna be able to afford mm -hmm. it. We said, well, hang on a second. Let's go back to 2017. Yeah. The exact same thing happened. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It was, the exact same yeah. thing has happened this time yeah. again. Wait for it, count to 10. Yeah. There'll never be the last time that you mm -hmm. can get in. Sure, that was I a understand. quick run up and a quick run down. This has been a lot more gradual, so I think the other side of it will be gradual too. And I, I still Fair anticipate value, it being though. more of a flat line. Fair and, market and value. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know if I want to call it a correction. A correction is a term that we tend to a jump to. It's a stabilization. But what is a correction? Well, it's, 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 we're talking about market manipulation, basically, yeah. right? We have people who've well, gone... Well, correction sounds like, yeah, it's that it's forced. Um, yeah. Whereas this is just the, the natural flow. Well, right? this is the natural flow. What happens when interest rates go up, uh, you know, a point and a half Yeah, but isn't uh, in, that in artificially manipulating that is it. the, you know, the commerce and free enterprise and, Absolutely. You know, the way the market uh, is supposed to work, supply and demand. And it always frustrates me. And it frustrates me because regardless of how well intended those initiatives or actions by the government are, there are always unforeseen or ignored ramifications for, for parts of the economy and for individuals. And Again, nothing works that. in a yeah. vacuum. So yeah. we artificially stimulated the market for years and years and years. Yeah. We printed money, what is it, $600 billion of money that was printed, which means that every dollar is now not worth the same that it was yeah. a minute ago. In order to buy goods that are in tight supply, in order to supply a, an industry of building homes, et cetera, with raw materials or materials mm -hmm. in general, uh, et, et cetera, that are now costing more of those devalued dollars to, to buy the same yeah. product, and it continues to perpetuate, and you've got artificially low interest rates at the mm. same time, add inflation. It, I'm not the economist, but this is one, this is, this is not a simple equation. No. It's a very complex equation, and it continued because people had an artificial sense of confidence of what they thought they could afford, as well as market pressures, again, leaving the GTA, coming to a region like ours or anywhere mm. outside the GTA, and there's a run on affordable or more affordable yeah. housing. Uh, it, it just it just continued, and we we called it a while ago. It's not sustainable. No. So what we're looking at today is I wouldn't call it a correction so much as a forced correction, which is hey we need to get a hold of things here, 
and the market is now dictating that housing prices come down because buyers are not going to be able to qualify yeah. for the same amount of home that they were yeah. three months but ago. Again, and, right? and I, I stick by this, and, and I could be wrong because it's, it's, it's not carved in stone, but I don't believe, I'm sure in some pockets, some markets in the country, we will see house prices drop. Absolutely. And we are seeing it in pockets within the GTA now, and, and of course those headlines are out there. But here in Barrie, given the price differential between the GTA and the, the whole Golden Horseshoe region and our region, you're still going to see that outpouring of people for all the reasons we've talked about on previous shows. But here are some of the <clears throat> things that, like ramifications of, of the rising interest rates that you won't see talked about so much. Um, and I, I don't believe that you're going to see suddenly people stop buying homes. Uh, I think the demand for homes will continue. People still need a roof over the head. People still ultimately prefer ownership over renting. So the people will continue to buy homes. The, the amount of home they're able to buy is going to diminish, but they're still going to qualify for a mortgage, just not as much. Uh, so what that does in effect is a lot of people who may have originally been intending to buy an entry level uh, detached home are now finding themselves turning towards condominium purchases or townhouse purchases. That is the affordable housing stock in most communities, townhouses, condos, that tends to be the entry level price ranged homes. And if more and more people are being squeezed towards them, what does that do? It artificially inflates the prices of those homes. So what have you done? And that puts You've pressure on the rental market. And put, puts pressure on the rental market. And those investors, the new investors who want to become landlords, are buying at those higher prices. They're not absorbing the added costs that, that come from having to buy more for more and pay more, have a higher mortgage. It gets passed on to the renter. And so, why? Because we also continue to have a pause on new development in the sense mm -hmm. that if the developers don't know what uh, what the price they're going to pay to borrow money to build these uh, and to buy yeah. these materials to build the homes, again, you're going to see uh, you're going to continue to see back pressure on the housing supply. I'm going to make an admission here, though, on nationally syndicated television. Uh, you're it's about time, I, Aaron. I'm going to make an admission. We support you on this. Well, thank you very okay, much. This is not you. easy for me to do on, okay. on, on television, but I am going to, I'm going to admit no something. No one's judging. And that is that uh, I was wrong uh, about something, and, and, and uh, I, I don't want to admit to being wrong because, uh, well, let me, let me give you the story. I said not so many months ago that rates there are, are going to rise. There are women there who just drop their coffee cup, you know. Right <laughs> Rates are going to rise. They have to rise. Yeah. Our rates are artificially low. They are. We are artificially propping up an economy. We are artificially no, you get an stim on stimulating uh, the economy. It's come with its own set of ramifications. And I said that there is no way that anybody in their right mind, knowing if they're paying attention as we have, mm -hmm. to how fragile the balance of the economy is right now yeah. because we have on top of everything else COVID we've got the great recession or re resignation we've got people with artificially stimulated uh, funds that are supplementing their businesses yeah, and their livelihood. People are overextended. People were overextended and that was I'll never understand how people over uh, overextended themselves as much as they have however I said there is no way mm -hmm. that the average Canadian will be able to sustain a significant increase in the prime rate. Yeah. And I said, it will have to be very slow and very calculated. Now, it needs to happen, and mm -hmm. people need to do their part to back off their, their potentially reckless spending habits. Yeah. And we need to get back to basics, and we need to you know, be very careful about watching our watching our output and our income mm -hmm. balance, right? But I said, if the rates go up, people are going to be in trouble. Do you see the rate of default and people foreclosing on their own well, homes going again, up dramatically, or what do you expect? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm making an absolute admission 
mm -hmm. to being wrong because I said I said that there's no way that they could do this in, in other than tiny tiny little increments and and it's going to take time because but they've done it because we have overextended ourselves yeah. and people will not be able to afford it. Well, there is a there is an article that uh, that CTV News just published mm -hmm. on the 13th that said nearly one in four homeowners say that they will have to sell their homes if interest rates go up any further and mm -hmm. In addition to that, the bulk of people surveyed, I believe the survey was uh, conducted by Manulife uh, Bank, uh, said that they are in trouble. Even if they don't have to sell their yeah. homes, they are in absolute trouble uh, uh, You know, in terms of being able to afford life. They're going to be no. making some tough choices. And, and here's where I was wrong. I, w I wasn't wrong that the rates needed to go up. Mm -hmm. I wasn't wrong that we were in a fragile state. I was wrong in thinking that those who are setting policies would, wouldn't be as cavalier, Forceful. careless, yeah. and reckless, and, and that, man, talk about manipulating what will be either A, a recession, or... Well, they're bringing one on. If they continue to absolutely. raise rates, it's inevitable that, you know, to a degree, we will see recession within... within absolutely, and I am not someone who likes to be the bearer of doom and gloom, and that's why I'm quoting Manulife and CTV, but we said on the show there's no way that they're going to do this. That, that, that would be absolutely uh, reckless to do so, and you're going to cause a problem. Well, we'll timestamp this show, and we'll see what happens over the next months, uh, but I definitely uh, forecast... Uh, people who are going to be looking for credit counseling, people are either going to be selling, and, that, and that's again, going back to 12 weeks ago, the house isn't worth what you bought it at. Well, it's not even a matter of whether the house is worth what you bought it for, yeah. it's the rate yeah. at which you bought it. When you say, well, I went variable because variable was cheap, it was prime minus whatever, prime yeah, minus a half. Yeah. Okay, but if prime's gone up a point and a half, it's not prime minus a half of what it used to be. It's prime minus yeah. a half of what it is now, and that might be a, a percentage yeah. and a half uh, a difference. Some, some people, I, I doubt very much it's going to be one in four. If 25% per, of homes suddenly came onto the market, that would be a crash and burn worse than we saw in the you know roaring 20s, dirty 30s, uh, you know, depression. I underestimate nobody anymore, Mike. I, uh, I don't underestimate the decisions that the and, federal bank. And if you'll forgive the, the term, it's kind of uh, an economic cleansing that our uh, federal government is I'm undertaking here. I'm suggesting to you that people are underprepared in general. I mean, mm -hmm. there are more people than what, who watch our show, uh, but it's about getting good guidance. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are going to be tapping into home equity lines of credit, mm -hmm. second mortgages, uh, mortgage, uh, you know, uh, loans from, yeah. from, from all of the institutions that I have no use for and no time for, the ones that are what I consider predatory yeah. lenders. I'm suggesting to you that people are going to uh, have an internal reckoning uh, of their own. And whether that manifests as one in four homes yeah. are going to, no, I don't necessarily think that that's going to be the case, but I do think we're going to yeah. see a significant rise in activity of people who are seeking additional financial yeah. aid assistance yeah. in some way, shape, or form. So we, I, I, again, if you have been paying attention, if you have been following good guidance, uh, you're likely well positioned. Mm. If you've also been paying attention and following good guidance and you haven't yet made the move, there will be increased inventory coming on the market from people who are doing duress sales. And it may not be that they're bankrupt. Duress it may sales, not be that they're yeah. in power of sale, but they may be deciding they need to reconsider and yeah. they might be And the volume of purchasers is going to decrease somewhat. And t for two reasons, I believe. I, I, because we've had such an onslaught of buyers, many of the people intending to buy have made the transition from renter to owner. Um, but many more will have hit that uh, you know, that, that glass ceiling where they just can't break through at, at this time with interest rates on top of everything else that's holding them back from, a, from making or qualifying for a purchase. But here's where my sense of optimism kicks in uh, a bit on all of this. And, and I mean, we're, our government is never too far removed from, you know, the voice of the people. They're, they're you know, who elected them there, put them into office. There are times over the course uh, of, you know, a run of a government where they seem to be totally devoid of any, you know, sense of what people want and what they're saying. But as we grow closer to election time, they realize they're, they're counting on that voice. Right now, we're kind of in the middle of that, but we just had an election. There's a level of overconfidence and an also a level of 
not having to worry. We have a government who thinks, okay, whatever we do today, three years from now, they'll have forgotten and it won't impact us then. So do all your dirty work a year in, and right now we're in that dirty work period. But I, I think the people are gonna start to speak up. I mean, if we can you know, go and shut down the capital of our country because we were uncomfortable wearing masks, I'd like to think that maybe that there's uh, some protests that might take place from people who want to save families' homes, which I think would be a far greater inconvenience. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue, so. Mike, that, uh, put, it, put it this way, uh, my confidence in government is, is well, interesting at best, but I, <laughs> I, think, I, I think when you look at people, As and someone you look at people who are going made, to, sorry. when you look at people who are going to look to the media, they're going to look to the news, they're going to look to the one-liners from the politicians, yeah. remember this. Mm -hmm. Nobody's been taking all the elements of the equation and laying it out clearly so that everybody understands. They've been selling this this portion of the formula or that portion of the formula or that portion well, of the formula. Well, when do they ever? Well, and, and again, until we each take responsibility for ourselves to look yeah. at the entire big picture uh, so that we truly understand how everything works, uh, we're going to continue to have other people who are, who are pulling yeah. the strings for us. We do have to go to break, and though, Mike. And let's talk about that when we come let's back Let's do break. that when we come back from the break on the other side of this short break on Rogers. Uh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation. And again, we are going to get to the point where, uh, you know, people at home can uh, can make the best decision that they can for themselves there's, and their family once you understand all And the, there is light. Hang in there. There is light. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Araf. And we've been throwing uh, warnings and, you know, Doom and gloom? Have we not? Nah, how about how about common sense, Mike? Let's go with common sense. Common sense, okay. Yeah. And yeah, and I, I hate for it to be negative because I, I like to think there's precautions that we put out there, but overall, I think the real estate industry certainly historically it's had all its ups and downs, um, but there's always opportunity in any market, and that's not cliche. That's a very uh, true reality, and and I think. Some of the things, regardless of whatever headline of the day you might be looking at on any given day, uh, something that will always hold true is the demand for homes will continue to be strong in Canada, in Ontario, certainly within our region. Um, the, the need or desire to own versus rent and convert from being a renter to an owner, that stays in. I think that's an ingrained thing that all of us want is to become homeowners at some so, point in so our So beyond life. the headline, Mike, there are a couple of realities and those couple of realities include, but are not limited to, again, we've been saying it for a long time, there is no Canadian real estate market, there's no, no. Ontario real estate market, there's what's going on in the GTA and surrounding area, there's what's going on up here. Yeah. And, in, uh, within, and in, in beyond within here. our municipality, there are pockets that say different influences Within the municipality, impacts. there will also be different price points of homes. The yeah. homes over a million dollars, the homes under a million dollars. Now we may relatively say, uh, we may say with confidence that relatively speaking, uh, there, while certain pockets in certain areas may see a decrease in home price or a decrease in activity, which equals mm -hmm. a decrease in eventual sale price, yeah. as you said quite rightly, will also shift the focus of the type of home that people are buying. So there might in be additional categories. activity yeah. in a different category of yeah. home, more of a mid-market home. Yep. However, for people who live here and grew up here and had expectations about being able to stay here, they will still continue to see some pressure because people leaving other markets for relative affordability will be finding that Well, they're not going here. away. Yeah. But I, I think if you're a local homeowner or, or someone who has yet to buy your first home in the past two and a half years, um, you really did not stand a chance against that uh, homeowner couple in Scarborough or Etobicoke or you know wherever they were Burlington Oakville um, who sold that house for two million dollars and is coming up here and looking at putting a bid on a, cash on a home they're doing a cash purchase they don't have to put a financing condition and they don't have they're waiving the inspection condition we'll deal with whatever it is because we just put you know X number of hundreds of thousands of dollars into our bank account 
So they're approaching it from a different perspective, whereas that local buyer, I've got to sell my Barry home and buy another home in the same market for a relatively equal value, or maybe I'm trading up a bit. I'm a new buyer buying for the first time. I mean, you just can't compete with that. And what I'm optimistic about is as the market quiets, yes, the, the ceiling has dropped a little bit on the product you can buy just because you're going, your financing is going to cost you more. Um, but you're going to have less competition. You're going to have a better chance at the table of getting your offer through. You're going to have a better chance of being able to put some terms and conditions into that offer to protect you without feeling like your offer is automatically just going to be tossed in the waste bu bucket because there's a financing or an inspection. I, I just spoke with someone yesterday. It was a, a Toronto agent who has a local listing here who, who wanted to let me know my, my client would not be intimidated if you put an inspection condition in the offer. Oh, uh, to try there's and encourage, a change Yeah, of to heart. try and encourage me to bring an offer forward. And I thought, wow, because that is the mindset that, you know, th that unfortunately has, has, has overtaken is that I, I, I I'm, can't I'm be gonna putting conditions in my offer. I'm going to go on record one more time and say there was never a time where going in without conditions was a good idea. It's never I a good idea. I don't care how good the yeah. market is. Yeah. It's a bad idea. Yeah. And if you You'll win the battle and lose the war, that's what happens. Absolutely. And if you felt pressured by either a friend, the neighbor, whoever mm -hmm. you're trying to impress, or somebody involved in your transaction to go in without that condition, that was a foolish move. I discouraged it all along with my and clients. And very simply put, clearly it wasn't your time to buy. No. So no. don't buy because if you waited 15 mm -hmm. minutes, you'd be where we are mm -hmm. today in a much better position with your yeah. ducks in a row going in. How likely are we to see, Mike, um, condition on sale of existing home? Um, you're starting to see it uh, come back because homes are taking a little longer to sell, so the need to put that SPP, as it's referred to, mm -hmm. uh, in place is increasing. Um, it's a conversation I would suggest that the buyer have with the selling agent uh, who will, you know, to see if that seller is willing to uh, accommodate an SPP offer. Uh, because even in the best markets, some people don't want to see that because effectively, even though the home is, continues to be offered for sale, it, the, the, the number of showings on that home tends to go down when there is a conditional SPP offer in place. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not a position that most buyers really want to be it's just another stress point for everybody because someone else decides well I am going to put in an offer and try and bump that SPP offer now that original uh, you know purchase offer those people have to come clean within a 24 48 hours they have to firm up on that or risk losing the offer to you know the next offer that's coming in so um, but yeah, short answer being is yeah, yeah, we're starting to see SPPs come in yep. slowly but surely. So I, I want to change the discussion just a little bit, Mike, and talk about those people who purchased in the last two, two years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uncommon, especially given the way conditions were and yeah. have been, whether you are uh, working for somebody uh, under a normal you know, employment relationship right. or whether you're self-employed or you're incorporated, et cetera, or maybe you did what others do and that is you know, mixed up your income because you had to supplement your income with a secondary employment or somebody right. was working from home or you took the CERB payment, et cetera. There are so many things that changed in the last two years. Mm -hmm that can affect <clears throat> your ability to refinance the home you're already yeah. in. Not many people uh, think about it this way, but the truth, the reality is, you buy a home based on your ability status to today. Pay. Yeah, yeah. Based on your employment today, based on your age today, mm -hmm. oddly enough, based on your health today, it may not be blatantly expressed, mm -hmm. but that's being considered. Everything's being considered. Your credit worthiness, your down payment, the condition of the market, the condition of your home, how readily or easily could the bank sell your home if they needed to, if you didn't make your payments, for example. Um, but the economic climate, everything mm -hmm. is being factored in when a bank decides to lend you money. And you're being uh, decisioned, the decision is happening based on the business case that you're 
bank or broker or agent puts forward for you to qualify for that mm. mortgage. Okay. One year later, not unheard of, yeah. that you might get a one year term depending on what the risk was. If your situation was deemed to be slightly riskier or more transient, mm -hmm. a bank might only offer a one year solution or may, yeah. a borrower might elect only to yeah. take a one year Because it's a higher rate, solution. because you're, you're a higher risk and they ideally are gonna be in a better position a year from now to qualify for a lower rate. It is rate. not yeah. unheard of that people were advised, let's get you in, mm -hmm. let's get you in, and then we'll get you settled, and then we'll renegotiate. That's not unheard of. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily recommend it. It depends, everything is dependent on the uniqueness yeah. of the file. Far more to lose once you do that though. However, not unheard of that people did what it took to get in. Mm -hmm. The reality is, <laughs> for at least half of the 25 to 30 years that you might take to pay down your mortgage, mm -hmm. Um, the bank has a bit bigger share, bigger interest in, in your own home, yeah. right, than you do. So when it comes time to refinance, it's not just about refinancing, it's about requalifying re to stay in your own mm -hmm. home. You do not ever just qualify to get into the home, you qualify to stay in the home as long as you're borrowing mm. money to live there, as so long as you don't own it outright. Let me throw two questions sure. in there relating to that. How much flexibility, if any, does the lender have with you at year four, year eight, every time you go to renew, and does it that flexibility increase over time? And what are the likelihood, or was there ever a likelihood that uh, your lender may just automatically renew you without doing a, a, a complete audit of your, your current financial status at those intervals? Yeah, such a simple question, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a very um, intricate answer. Uh, so to the, let me get to the last part of your question first. Are there ever scenarios where a lender can just renew with you without doing a complete audit? I would argue that if you read the contract, somewhere in there there's fine print that says that the bank reserves the right, the right to audit to, yes. every single time. How likely is that practiced? It's not likely mm -hmm. uh, to be in practice. The bank will typically, if not always, send out a letter that says, early, by the way, you have options to renew. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you just initial beside the term that you want, here's the rates that we're offering. It's not open for negotiation, really, and, but yeah. you, you can get an agent or a broker to help you negotiate that a little bit. Um, however, that's assuming that you're not asking for a re-advance of money. For mm -hmm. example, in the last year or two or three, did you add up extra debt on higher interest credit cards that you wanted to blend and absorb into your mortgage again? Right. Yeah. Not a great idea, but it does happen. It happens frequently enough that people need to do that. So it is possible that you'll just sign a document and say, I still have the same job, nothing has changed in my life that is material, that mm -hmm. is worth talking about, that throws a flag, and I'm just signing here and I'm gonna accept the terms. Mm. Uh, we'll have another show on whether or not that's a good idea or a great idea or, or what are the, yeah. you know, both sides But they sides want your business to continue for another four years. So it is possible. It is possible that you can just renew. Yeah. And anticipate that it's not gonna be the best rate out there. Why? Because mm -hmm. the bank knows that in order for you to negotiate and fight hard to get the best rate, you're gonna have to get a lawyer, you're gonna have to get a home appraisal, you're gonna have to put all your paperwork, your show your taxes, pull your credit, et cetera, et cetera. And many people would rather forego go go all, all of again. that yeah. and pay a slightly higher uh, interest rate to renew mm -hmm. than to go and fight for it. So it really depends on the scenario. We do have to go to break, Mike, yeah. but when we come back, let's talk about how the last couple of years may very well have had an influence on people's ability to refinance. And again, not all doom and gloom, but you gotta have your ducks in a row. So we should, we should go to break yeah, real sure. quick, but when we come back, let's pick that up because there's some great questions in there, Mike, and I think uh, people would want to know. So we'll be right back on the other side of this break on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif. We're talking about how the market is, is evolving, it's changing, and certainly at the core of that is the rise in interest rates. The Bank of Canada rates have pushed rates up a bit in the past couple months, and all indications are that they're not finished rising those rates. And so we're just having a dialogue here talking about uh, 
what those who are already in the market or own can expect and should be prepared for, but also talking a bit about what those who do anticipate purchasing or perhaps are actively looking to purchase right now, uh, what they can and should be doing to protect themselves. So. Absolutely, and I think, Mike, again, one of the things that we have to take into consideration is that over the last couple of years, people have uh, been presented with options and mm. uh, some have taken them and, and we need and we, we have talked about it but we need to remind ourselves that you know lenders they, they scrutinize everything and everything mm. to them is about risk and opportunity and ensuring that they're going to get their money back and, and, and the interest yeah. back. So for, for those people who entered into uh, into COVID and uh, took advantage of some of the SERB payments uh, or uh, took advantage of an opportunity that was presented them to them by a bank or a credit issuer uh, to skip a payment, miss a payment, whatever it might be, those we found out the hard way. Uh, with, there was not necessarily mm -hmm. the level of disclosure uh, that I believe was warranted. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, uh, there, there are a number of people who got a nasty surprise, uh, you know, a, a significant percentage of people who got a nasty surprise because they accepted either a CERB payment or they accepted the opportunity to defer a payment, and that ends up on your credit bureau. Yeah. And when it they ends were up not on your clear credit, they in, were not clear. And that's unfortunate. And, and we talked about this, but when it ends up on your credit bureau, now, it flash, you know, fast forward a year or two years, and you're up for renewal, or you're up for refinance, or you're up for a requalification, maybe for a new yeah. purchase, or going out for the first time. To and buy the it. underwriter says, "Oh, it shows that you missed a payment. What's going on there?" Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you were going to be denied credit, but it may very well mean that your risk went up in their eyes on their mm -hmm. algorithm, and then suddenly your rate's going to be higher. Yeah. Uh, nothing was for free. Nothing was ever for free. <laughs> and whoever's mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. free or, or the goodwill of the bank or the credit mm -hmm. issuer, I'm sorry, we should have learned that one a long time ago. There is no such thing as goodwill in that regard. Mm -hmm. Nobody was offering goodwill. So, so there are people today who have to pay attention yeah. and, and should definitely reach out to a broker or an agent, uh, and not necessarily the bank in my personal opinion because you want an unbiased mm. opinion. You want somebody who's uh, uh, going to uh, give you the best advice regardless of yeah. the brand that's and being it, represented, right? Time-wise, so. at what point should they be doing that Not rather than Yesterday. obviously not waiting until the week before your... Uh, yeah, your mortgage comes up for renewal. You know, there's never a good time. We're always all busy. You know, we're we're always busy. Yeah, we've always got things to do, whether it's with our children or with mm. life, just in general. But, you know, I would encourage anybody definitely make the time. It's never convenient, sure. but make the time. But ideally, with enough surprises. time to correct whatever you, you learn, need you to. need to correct. Absolutely, that no less that than date six comes months up. for sure. <clears throat> uh, you, you know, but but. You know, uh, banks typically say if it's within the last two years, then, then they consider that a fresh delinquency of sorts, whatever yeah. that delinquency may be, but they mm -hmm. consider it in the last two years yeah. as being quite fresh. So again, anticipate your, your strategy may have to shift and, yeah. and change. Let's get back into getting people in a positive uh, uh, you know, direction though. Mm -hmm. There is opportunity right there now with is. the housing prices yeah. cooling a little bit, even with the interest rates higher, they're up by about a percentage and a half, but if the house prices come down 5% to 15%, depending on which localized area and which housing category you're talking about, then yeah. wouldn't you rather pay about an inch, a percentage more on the interest rate as long as yeah. you qualify for a house that you're effectively getting an immediate discount on of yeah. about 10%? That to me makes good sense. Sure. So again, get and, your ducks in and, a row. And there are those who may decide to get into the market because of those very factors. And there's probably, not probably, but there's definitely a, a lot of people who have watched what's been unfolding for the last two years and been waiting for that moment where they feel comfortable getting in. You remember that flashback we yeah, talked about? A lot of people just, yeah, oh, I do. There's and a flashback show that we said, hey, listen, so. wait. Yeah. You know, if you're not, if there's not an absolute need, mm -hmm. wait. There will come a time where this cools down. There will come a time where other people cannot continue to compete in the market. There yeah. will come a time where other people find themselves in a challenge position, maybe where they need to sell. Yeah. And, and you're it's not, not necessarily greedy by taking, taking advantage. advantage. No, no, there you go. It's just that the market has a way of balancing itself, and mm -hmm. and that supply and demand is 
You, you know, showed restraint, you form. got your ducks in a row, yeah. you put yourself in a good position, you got your down yeah. payment, you fixed your credit, you didn't overspend, you didn't buy a brand new car. Don't buy a brand new car if you're in the middle of buying a house. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you did all the right things. You've been pre-qualified. You positioned yeah. yourself to, to take advantage to of the opportunity, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm I running around with game. buyers right now and first time buyers and a couple, you know, repurchase. Uh, and you know they've come gone through the process even with the higher rates uh, it, it means the ceiling the home they may have been looking ideally at a year ago they may have had to cut back on their expectations uh, somewhat at the same time the realization that they're probably not going to have to pay two hundred thousand dollar over list uh, for that property so it, there's a sort of a balancing out uh, I want to throw just a little bit of advice out there for buyers but I do want to get one thing in that's geared towards sellers too. I just want to say it. You go to your mailbox every day, everybody else does. You've probably noticed an increase in the frequency of these letters that, that are, you know, handwritten. The pretend handwritten letters. And then pretend handwritten, then Reese guys saying, we will buy homes for cash from you. And you might not have seen them a year ago or two years ago or far less frequently. I think I've had three of them in my mailbox within the last I have month. As well. yep. And it's you know they come out of the woodwork just as the ice cream truck comes out when the temperature hits 30 degrees they're out there they're looking for those people who may be you know close to default my advice to any seller is if you find yourself in a position where you believe you're under pressure where you need to sell not just choosing to sell but you feel there's the risk you may lose your home um, your first line of defense shouldn't be going to one of those buy your home for cash people because you're going to lose out. I Sit strongly down with the, with the agree realtor. with that statement, yeah. Mike. You are definitely going to be, remember, there's nobody, <laughs> we just finished saying it a minute ago, nobody's doing anybody any favors out there. Uh, Mike, as a realtor, you do earn a fee, you do earn a commission for service, absolutely, and that's fully disclosed, et cetera. But anybody yeah. who's pr pretending to stick a handwritten letter in your in yeah. your mailbox saying they'll, they'll help you out, no questions asked. Well, my fee is far doing. less than what you're going to lose. They're going to give you, give you a severe over. discount on yeah. the cash. And by the way, I think what's important to state, though, is even if you find yourself in financial challenge, mm -hmm. the, gov the law is always on the side of the homeowner to protect and give as many opportunities and as much time as reasonably uh, reasonable and necessary to make yep. sure that there's a fair exit so you should never and the market is still strong enough if you are in challenge you should you definitely do not want to go and, and and make those make that person your first call definitely mm -hmm. uh, seek your guidance and, and see yep. yeah and so. on a similar note uh, now you think of it and uh, Read the fine print, be mindful of the realtor who, you know, also says, I will sell your home uh, if I don't sell your home give you cash. within 30 days or X number of days, I'll buy your home for cash. Because they too, are, they're not going to buy your, your home for the price you had it listed for for that 30 days. They're going to offer you a deeply discounted Deep discount. amount because they want to turn around and sell. I scowl at that. I just think that's uh, the... It's very I'm so confident in my ability I, I, I that if I don't sell it, I'll give you the cash. It's yeah. not the equal I'll, amount that you listed to. Read know. the fine print. But where's, in all cases, the ladies there? and gentlemen, yeah. read the fine print, reach out, yeah. get good guidance, uh, speak no. to a, a reputable uh, lawyer, a reputable uh, mm -hmm. realtor, a reputable agent or broker. There is always an opportunity to mitigate any of the challenges. Yeah. But uh, we have to go, Mike. we gotta, we, we got to wrap this one up. It's been a fascinating conversation, uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Hitting Home with Mike and Arf. Take care.